We are in Unit 10. This is Notes 4. Today we're starting Polar Equations and Calculus. I do expect you to know a lot about what you learned about polar equations last year. I'm going to go over a very brief review, but I do expect you to know a lot more than this. Okay. Um, we've been dealing this year about um, with equations and points in on the Cartesian coordinate system. We can graph the point 2, 3 so up here. That would be A. We can point uh, graph the point negative 2, negative 1. That would be B over here. And 1, negative 3 would be here. So we can do a lot with the Car Cartesian coordinate system, rectangular coordinate system. Um, with polar coordinates, all the points are in the form R theta rather than X, Y. So if a point is in polar form, then the first coordinate is r and the second coordinate is theta. Theta, of course, can be degrees in degrees or radians. We use radians in this class. All right, the origin is sometimes called the pole in, in polar coordinates. Um, you will hear them also ref this also referred to as the origin still. All right, to plot the point 3 pi over 3. 3 is the radius, so you will go out 3, and then you'll go to this, um, this angle, so out 3, and then to pi over 3. And that would be this point right here. So that's point A, um, I'm sorry, that's point B here. Okay. Point C, 4, 5 pi over 6. You'd go out 4 in, on the, as the radius, and then all the way over to 5 pi over 6. That would be C. D is 2, 7 pi over 6, so out 2, and then go to 7 pi over 6. Oops, right here. And 1, 7 pi over 4 would be out 1, and then all the way around to 7 pi over 4, so that would be right here. Okay. You can also have um, theta can be negative, which would mean instead of going uh, counterclockwise, you'll be going clockwise. So the point 3, negative 5 pi over 3 would be out 3, and then negative 5 pi over 3, you go backwards 5 pi over 3, so that would be where B is. Okay. Theta can also go around the circle more than once. So 7 pi over 3 is 6 pi over 3 plus 1 pi over 3. So out 3, go around once, and then pi over 3 more, you'd be back to B, and so forth. Okay. Um, R can be negative. R can be negative. If r is negative, then instead of going out 3 this way, you would go backwards 3. So for these, it might be easier to go to your angle first. So go to 4 pi over 3 first. Here's 4 pi over 3 here. And then you're going negative 3. So 4 pi over 3 would actually be back here, where b is. Okay. So. In this case, the angle 4 pi over 3 is not located over here in the third quadrant where we think of 4 pi over 3 being. That's going to be an important concept for us. Okay? So just because the angle is 4 pi over 3 doesn't mean you have something located over here in the third quadrant. All right? All right. And then another thing that I really do need you to know are these conversions. So um, cosine of theta is x over r. So x is r cosine theta. And that just comes from Sokotoa uh, and using a right triangle. y is r sine theta. And tangent of theta is y over x, which means we could solve for theta. Theta is arctan of y over x. And r squared is x squared plus y squared from the Pythagorean theorem. Um, one thing that you need to know, another thing that you need to know, is that 
the absolute value of r is the distance from the origin to a point. We need absolute value because r can be negative. So the distance from the origin to a point is the absolute value of r, not just r. It is just r as long as r is positive, but it's not always just r. Okay, we'll need to remember that when we're doing um, when we're finding the maximum distance from the origin to a curve, when we do our closed interval test with theta, you'll need absolute value of r for that distance. If you're maximizing distance, you put distance on your closed interval test. All right, so that was a very, very brief review of uh, polar points. Okay. All right, let's get to some calculus. For an equation in polar form, dy dx is the slope. dy dx is a slope. Even though your points are r theta, the slope is still dy dx. So to get the slope, we're going to need dy d theta divided by dx d theta, very similar to what we did with parametric equations and vectors. Okay. But dy dx is the slope, always. dr d theta is not the slope. dy dx is the slope. Okay? Since dy dx is the slope, we are going to need to get y and x involved. So we're going to need to use that fact that I just talked about. y is r sine theta and x is r cosine theta. We're going to need to use that to find the slope. Okay, slope of the tangent line. So let's do one. Let's say that we're trying to find the slope of the, of the tangent line to this curve at the point where theta is pi over 6. Well, I know that that is a cardioid because of the equation. I know that that's a cardioid. I know it's on, I know that it's, um, the bulk of it is on the positive y-axis, and I would go up 4 if I wanted to sketch this graph. I would go up 4, side to side 2, and it's a cardioid, so we go through the pole. So this little graph looks something, oops, something like that, a little cardioid. Okay, so we want to find the slope when, pi, when we're at theta is pi over 6, so we want to find that slope right there, slope of that tangent line. Okay, all right. So, slope of the tangent line is dy dx, always, not dr d theta. I want to stress that. So, we want to find dy dx. So, dy dx is dy d theta divided by dx d theta. If we want y and x, we have to go get y and x. I'm going to go off to the side, okay? y is r sine theta, and they tell us what r is. So that is 2 plus 2 sine theta times sine theta. Okay, x is r cosine theta. So 2 plus 2 sine theta times cosine theta. And now we need dy d theta divided by dx d theta. So up on top, I need dy d theta. Well, here's y, and now we have y in terms of all thetas. So I'm just going to take the derivative of this with respect to theta, because we want to, dy d theta. So I need to use the, po the product rule. The derivative of this piece the derivative of 2 is 0. The derivative of 2 sine theta is 2 cosine theta. And I multiply by sine theta left alone. Plus is part of the product rule. Now I'm leaving these parentheses alone. And I'm multiplying by the derivative of sine theta, which is cosine theta. Okay, divided by. Okay, now I'm going to take the derivative of x with respect to theta. So another product rule. 
This is still going to be 2 cosine theta. Multiply by cosine theta left alone. Plus is part of the product rule, right? But I see what's going to happen. I'm going to be multiplying by the derivative of cosine, which is negative. So I'm not going to fill in that sign quite, right, uh, quite yet because I know I'm going to come back and have to correct that. So I'm multiplying. I have 2 plus 2 sine theta left alone. And now I'm multiplying by the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine. Just saves me a little step there. And since x is always our cosine theta, it will always work out like that when you're finding the slope of a polar curve. Okay, so that's the that is the slope for any theta. Now we want to fill in. We want to find dy dx when theta is pi over six. So we're putting in pi over six for theta. Okay. These will likely be multiple choice questions, so you're going to have to actually know your unit circle values and figure this out. So I'm going to have 2 times cosine of pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2. Sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. Okay, sine of pi over 6 is a half times 2 is 1. Cosine of pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2. All divided by 2 times cosine of pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2. Cosine of pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2. Minus 2 plus, this is going to be the same thing it was up above, so that's 2 plus 1. Sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. So this is... Okay, from the begin from this first piece here, this two will cancel with one of these twos, and I'm still left with square root of three over two. Here we'll have three, three square root of three over two, all divided by. Okay, this two will cancel with this two, and I'm left with three over two. And then here we have three over two. What happened? Well, the denominator is zero. So this is undefined. So the slope of the line tangent is undefined. That would be the answer here. What does that mean in the situation? That means that this tangent line that I drew, I didn't draw it completely correct because it should be vertical. When theta is pi over 6, the tangent line is vertical. And for the sake of your notes, I'm going to write that in. When theta is pi over 6, the tangent line is vertical. And we know it's vertical because the slope is undefined. Okay? All right. Number two. Find the slope of the line tangent to the polar curve. R is equal to cosine of 3 theta at the point when theta is pi over 4. Okay. So again, the slope of the line tangent is always dy dx. Always. So dy dx, which is dy d theta over dx d theta. Okay, I'm going to go off to the side because I need y and I don't have y yet. So y is our sine theta, got to know that. So here, r is cosine of 3 theta. Multiply that by that sine theta. x is our cosine theta, which will be cosine of 3 theta times cosine theta. Okay, dy d theta. Here's y in terms of theta, so we're taking the derivative with respect to theta. The derivative of, oh, so another power a product rule. Um, the derivative of cosine of 3 theta is negative 3 sine of 3 theta. Multiply, I'm going to put that in parentheses. Multiply by sine theta left alone plus 
Now I'm leaving cosine of 3 theta left alone, and I'm going to multiply by the derivative of sine theta, which is cosine theta, divided by, same thing now with x. We want dx d theta. So the derivative of cosine of 3 theta, that'll be the same thing that we found here in that first parentheses. So that's going to stay the same. Hopefully we did it correctly that time because we're going to be copying it down here. Now we're going to multiply by the cosine theta left alone. It would be a plus, but I know it's coming. So we're going to have cosine of 3 theta left alone times the derivative of cosine theta, which is negative sine theta. And now we're going to evaluate dy dx when theta is pi over 4. So dy dx when theta is pi over 4 is, okay, we got negative 3. I need sine of 3 theta. So sine of 3 pi over 4, that's the second quadrant where sine is positive. And we have square root of 2 over 2. Then we have sine of pi over 4, first quadrant, square root of 2 over 2 plus cosine of 3 theta, three time, uh, so cosine of 3 pi over 4, second quadrant, cosine is negative. So negative square root of 2 over 2, cosine of pi over 4 is positive square root of 2 over 2. Okay, negative 3, sine of 3 pi over, 3 pi over 4 is positive square root of 2 over 2, Cosine of pi over 4 is positive square root 2 over 2 minus cosine of 3 pi over 4 is negative square root 2 over 2 and sine of pi over 4 is square root 2 over 2. You see all those, everything was over 2 here. Everything had an over 2. So I'm going to clean this up immediately and multiply top and bottom by 4 and that will get rid of every one of my um, denominators. So I'm multiplying both terms on top and bottom by 4 and all of these will then be gone. Okay, so I have negative 3 times 2 minus 2 divided by negative 3 times 2 plus 2. And this is negative 6 minus 2 is negative 8. And negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. So this slope is 2. That would be the multiple choice answer. Okay? So whenever you are trying to find the slope of the line tangent, you go back to dy dx. Oops. dy dx is the slope of the line tangent, okay? All right, let's talk about something else. Let's say that we are trying to find, okay, we are considering the polar curve, three, r is equal to three plus six cosine theta. That's a little limason with a loop because this three is less than six, so limason with a loop, right? A little inner loop. Um, the bulk of it is on the positive x-axis because of the plus cosine. Okay, we would go out 9, side to side 3, and the loop would also be 3 because 6 minus 3 is 3. So you should be able to graph that yourself. Lots of times it will give, give you the graph anyway, but you should be able to graph it yourself. Okay, part A, for what values of theta between 0 and 2 pi is r positive. Okay, well we want to know when r is positive so I'm going to sign chart r. If you want to know when something is positive, sign chart it, whatever it is, right? So I'm going to take my r. R is 3 plus 6 cosine theta, and I'm setting it equal to 0 because I want a sine chart. And the sine chart is that number line. You need to know where your zeros are. 
So here we have cosine theta. If I subtract 3 and then divide by 6, we're going to have negative 1 half. So theta is 5, I'm sorry, not 5 pi. It's a pi over, over 3 reference angle. So it's 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Quadrants 2 and 3 with a pi over 3 reference angle, right? So those are the two values that go on our number line. I'm going to do that over here, I think. So here's our number line. We only care about between 0 and 2 pi. And I do want 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3 on my number line. But then I'm going to stop at 2 pi, 2 pi because they tell me to. All right. So we're sign charting R. Okay. So if I put a small angle in for R, and I'm going in for R here. If I put a small angle, oh, something in between here, um, maybe pi over 2. Pi over 2 is between 0 and 2 pi over 3. Let's put pi over 2 in. If I put pi over 2 in for theta, cosine of pi over 2 is 0. 3 plus 0 is positive, right? So this section here is positive. And I know enough about cosine to know that it does alternate signs around at zero. So if this is positive, this has to be negative. This has to be positive. Okay? So R is positive. Therefore, R is positive on zero to two pi over three and 4 pi over 3 to 2 pi. Right at 0 is R positive. If we put 0 in for, in for theta, if we put 0 in for theta, cosine of 0 is 1, 3 plus 6 is positive. So I should include 0 because they told me to include it if possible, right? 2 pi, same thing. Uh, cosine of 2 pi is also 1, so that's going to make R, po R positive there. I'm not going to put the line under 4 pi over 3 because r is 0 there and 0 is not positive. Okay? So, when r is negative in between here, when r is negative, that's when this little inner loop is formed. How do I know that? Because that's the only way we would get that inner loop. Okay? We start here when r is 0. When r is 0, we start here. and we go around until we get to theta is 2 pi over 3, and then we're about to start this inner loop. So as it graphs, it goes like this, 2 pi over 3, goes like this, 4 pi over 3, and then it keeps on going, and now r is positive again. Okay? Part B, for what values of theta in the same interval is R increasing? Well, if you want to know when something is increasing, you find out when the derivative of that something is positive. So R is increasing when R prime is positive. Therefore, we need to sign chart R prime. Okay? So we need to find r prime and sign chart it. So r prime, the derivative of 3 is 0. The derivative of 6 cosine theta is negative 6 sine theta. We're going to set r prime equal to 0 because we're about to sign chart it. Well, negative 6 sine theta is 0 whenever sine is 0. So that is when theta is 0 pi and 2 pi. That's when sine is 0. We know the graph of sine, right? So sine is 0 at 0 pi and 2 pi. Okay, let's sine chart that. So 0 pi and 2 pi. And we are sine charting r prime this time. Okay, let's put in pi over 2. Let's put in pi over 2 for theta. Sine of pi over 2 is 1 times negative 6 is going to make this negative. And then we know enough about sine to know that it does alternate signs around its zeros. 
So this has to be positive there. So um, so R is increasing on pi to 2 pi. And for increasing, we do include the boundaries by definition of increasing. We include the boundaries. Okay? All right, what does that mean in this problem? Let's think about that. We started off when theta is 0. When theta is 0, we're starting right here. What is r right there? Well, when theta is 0, r is 9. As theta increases, what is r doing? As theta increasing, r is going down. And it makes sense. r is getting closer to the pole, to the origin, as theta increases. As theta increases, r is getting closer to the pole right? R is decreasing. Now over here, remember that R is now negative here. R is still going down because it's getting more and more negative. And it's getting more and more negative and until it gets over here to R is equal to negative 3. And then R starts to get more positive. So right here is when theta is pi and R is starting to get more positive here and it gets more, it, it is increasing, increasing, increasing until it gets all the way back here to 9. So that's the meaning of, that is the meaning of R prime, okay? Tells you information about when R is increasing or decreasing. Okay, part C. For what values of theta between 0 and 2 pi is the distance between the origin and the, and the curve increasing? Well, distance is the absolute value of r. The distance between the origin and the curve is the absolute value of r. We want to know when the absolute value of r is increasing. So one way to do that would be to take the absolute value of R's derivative and see where it is positive. But finding the derivative of an absolute value is complicated. You need piecewise functions and it gets complicated. So instead of finding where the absolute value of R is positive, we're going to use the fact that the distance is increasing. The distance between the origin and the curve is increasing when, okay, let's think about this. Here, here R was positive and R prime was negative. Here, R, R was positive but R prime was negative. So that distance is decreasing. The distance between the origin and the curve is decreasing. Here, R prime was still negative, but R was now negative as well. And what's happening to the curve? What's happening to a point on this curve? Its distance from the origin is increasing. So from this theta value to this theta value, the distance between the origin and the curve is increasing. So what is true about that? Well, what's true is that R and R prime have either the same signs or different signs. And that should ring a bell to you. We've used that fact before. We used that when we were doing rectilinear motion and we were trying to find out when a particle's speed was increasing or decreasing. Okay, so for the sake of your notes, I'm going to say, I'm going to write that down. Um, the distance is increasing when R and R prime have the same sign. Okay, the distance is decreasing 
when R and R prime have different signs. So we have all we already have number line for R and R prime, so I'm just going to combine my number lines. Zero, I need two pi over three, and then I'm going to come grab this pi. And then I'm going to get that 4 pi over 3. I'm going to make sure they're in order, right? And then the 2 pi. Okay. I'm going to put R on top, and I'm going to put R prime on the bottom. Of course, it doesn't matter, but that's what I'm going to do. Okay, R, we've already done the sign chart. R was positive until we got to 2 pi over 3. And then R was negative from 2 pi over 3 to 4 pi over 3. So r is negative here and r is negative here. r is also negative of pi, but we don't care. It's also ne it's negative from 2 pi over 3 to 4 pi over 3. And then r is positive from 4 pi over 3 to 2 pi. r prime was negative from 0 to pi. So r prime is negative from 0 to pi r prime is positive from pi to 2 pi. So this, this sign chart will give us where the distance is increasing and where the distance is decreasing. So since we want increasing here, I want to know where my signs are the same. And my signs are the same. So I'll say, therefore, the distance is increasing on 2 pi over 3 to pi and 4 pi over 3 to 2 pi. And this is an increasing, decreasing problem, so we include those boundaries. If they want a justification, the justification is what I wrote up here in orange. But if if it was if you hadn't written that, you would just say since r and r prime have the same signs there. I will tell you that a lot of times in problems, the the function what they give you for r has the property that r is always positive on the interval that you're given. If r is always positive, then the distance is r. So if r is positive always, then the distance will be the distance between the origin and the curve is r. So instead of having this absolute value of r, you could just use r prime as positive. So um, it is important to understand the meaning of these, how these are formed. Uh, you be able to look at the graph and, and tell what's going on on the interval that you're considering.